when your mind gets merged in the atman this nama rupa business stops what are projections nama and rupas if nama rupa stop in the mind mind becomes blank screen like brahman no more projections so the whole effort of adhyatma is to calm the mind down then next example is giving how this one has become many how one screen only appears as many many people trees one mountains rivers and everything all this is on the screen one example they give here is agnir yathaiko bhuvanam pravishto rupam rupam pratirupo babhuva ekas tatha sarva bhutantaratma rupam rupam pratirupo bahischa it says just like when fire enters this space world bhu agni atha ekam this fire is only one fire has two properties one is light another is heat so this heat and light of the fire is only one but when it enters the world or interacts with the objects of the world it appears in different different ways rupam rupam pratirupo babhuva it becomes different different types like first fire we know is sun it is heat and light another fire which we know at home is a candle light a flame it is also fire only forest fire is also fire only or anything else like a boiling water in water there is no fire but heat is there so that is also fire only or the temperature of the body where is this that is also fire only all the stomach that digests the food vaishvanara that is also fire only in of one type but heat is there or acidity is there which breaks down the food and the food also becomes fire only in us why because it keeps the maintains the body temperature so fire has the heat and light as a property and the same fire appears in so many ways appears as sun appears as forest fire in a flame of the candle also it's hidden like in wood in wood also there is fire but we can't see it but if you rub the wood together fire will come out so fire takes so many forms and names in the world likewise the same atma ekas tatha sarva bhutantar atma that's how only one atma is there which appears in all these forms sarva bhuta antar atma it is inside all the bhutas means all the things made of elements that antar atma within them is the same atma so you cannot say no my video screen is different from your video screen is different from your video screen that is jivatma concept parmatma concept is one continuous screen on which there are 30 40 projections happening so think of mahan atma like that there is one continuous infinite screen on which everybody's mind is projecting so like that the same fire how it has become so many in so many forms it takes likewise the same atman only is taking all the forms the ants the insect the trees the bees the birds the stones the rivers mountains panchabhutas humans all species in all of them the same atman only is there is the idea so they have explained it with the example of how fire becomes many though it is only one in essence light and heat which is the property of the fire is one its shape is different sometimes its color is different because of the fuel that it is being produced from like gas cooking gas gives nice blue flame good combustion is happening some bad combustion happening lot of soot will come the fire flame will look very dirty so all kinds of fuels are the reason for fire to look different otherwise fire is the same that is the idea and also temperature is this fire only another example they are giving just to make it very clear you can take all elements and do this example another example is being given is what vayur yathaiko bhuvanam pravishto rupam rupam pratirupo babhuva ekas tatha sarva bhutantar atma rupam rupam pratirupo bahischa so it says the similar example of how fire becomes many the same air is there in the world also that this air is present in everything including your own breath and the same self is in the same way assuming all the forms and expecting and it is inside outside and everywhere of it bahischa means outside that also inside that also like air you see cyclone comes what is there actually air only which has become a cyclone because the pressures in the ocean you know the hot air rises and whatever it creates this kind of a cyclone it is air only think of a dust storm 
when it raises all the dust so those dust storms are also what air only in one form when it is moving very heavily in the ocean when it moves it is cyclone on the earth when it moves it causes a storm or a tornado when this pressure builds so that is also nothing but air only and what else is air breeze when it is soft and nicely flowing it's called a cool nice breeze and when you breathe in and out what is that that is also air only but it is coming from within you think or when you blow into balloons or bubbles what is happening same air you taken the air from outside breathed in now you are blowing it into bubbles or balloons and the air is taking so many shapes so shapes are different and functions are different but air is one and the same in the ocean it raises a cyclone brings rains in a dust storm it raises the dust breaks things down in breeze it nicely flows and cools the atmosphere in breath it keeps us alive in bubbles it makes uh, shapes in balloons it makes shapes but all these thing is one air only which has taken many forms in the same way there is only one atman which is there in all but looks different looks like a man woman old man young man ant bird beast all this is one atman only sarvabhuta antaratma and rupam rupam different different forms and prati rupa all are its own reflections not different from it bahischa externally it appears to be different internally if you go and observe carefully everything is one the same it means what it is all pervasive within without and everywhere else it is atman and atman alone and nothing else with this idea we must look at the world is what it is saying so when you see anything in the world remember this breeze blows this is atman this is a sun or the heat atman everything in every small aspect of life try to see the hand of god hand of brahman this is the idea one more example is given suryo yatha sarvalokasya chakshu na lipyate chakshur shai bahya doshe ekas tatha sarvabhutantaratma na lipyate lok dukhena bahya same example suryo yatha like the sun there is only one sun the light original light is coming from where from our sun only now that light you will say now my light comes from my torch light how did the torch light come into existence somebody created the torch somebody created the bulb and the battery now how did this man live because he ate food how did this food come to him anta sun by the end so there is only one sun it he that sun is considered as the i you know chakshur suyo ajayata from the virata purusha hiranyagarbhas eyes opened sun came out and then the sun went and settled down in the eyes of the virata it means i and sun are like same that's why the sun is like the i of the world they are saying why because through sun's light only we see everything like we see everything through our eyes sun is the eye of the whole world because in the light of the sun alone we see everything but na lipyate chakshu shair bahya doshe but if there is a problem with our eye does the things that we see get affected by it no like that this drishti vision is not affected by the aperture called an eye it is saying see drishti is a subtle faculty eye is the instrument through which we see that drishti expresses itself similarly like sun's light falls on a beautiful temple a shivalingam let us say does that sun's light become pure or if it falls on a garbage or some broken house does it become any less important or holy no sun's light remains pure only though with it only we see everything by itself it is not touched and tainted similarly with the vision which is there in our vision vision is us different from the i remember one is indriya one is indriya artha the faculty of vision is different from the i that's what i mean to say so it is the faculty of vision through which we see eyes may see things differently but does it affect the faculty of vision does the vision become, suppose i see a red thing will i my eye and the vision become red and now i see will i become red or green or blue or gray no it does not it only experiences the world passes on to the mind the impressions are collected in the mind eye is not becoming red green blue like that sun's light is not becoming dirty pure in the same way this atman which is there ekas tatha sarvabhutantaratma this one atma which is there in all of them 
न लिप्यते इट इज नॉट टेंटेड नॉट टच्ड नॉट बाउंड बाय लोक दुखे न बाह्य ऑल द सॉरोज दैट आर हैपनिंग एक्सटर्नली दे डोंट मेक द आत्मन सॉरोफुल दुख मीन सुख ऑल्सो यू शूड अंडरस्टैंड एज दी कॉरलर इट दैट दैट इफ दुख इज नॉट टचिंग द आत्मन सुख ऑल्सो डज नॉट टच द आत्मन सो वेर इट इज हैपनिंग ऑल दिस इज हैपनिंग इन योर माइंड कलेक्शन इन द माइंड दिस इज गार्बेज डर्टी माइंड सन डिड नॉट थिंक इट इज अ गार्बेज आई शुड नॉट शाइन ऑन इट Your eyes did not get dirty by seeing the garbage, or your eyes did not become holy by seeing some holy thing, or sun did not become holy by shining on a holy person. It remained the same. Likewise, that one Atman which is there in all. So you will say in a papi also that Atman is there, in punyatma also that Atman is there, in a sad and a dejected person the same Atman is there, in a happy. and a very successful person also the same atman is there so is atman becoming successful and happy is atman becoming dejected and sorrowful is atman becoming holy or unholy no in all of them it remains untouched that is the idea that they are explaining to us your atman is pure nitya shuddha buddha mukta nirmala swarupinam that is untainted niranjana nirguna sanatana niketana this is not touched by any of these things now think for once if i believe that i am the atman all your depressions all your dejections all these idea of sorrows i am useless i am no good for nothing and they are also good for nothing all these impressions will disappear because we don't believe we are atman and everybody is atman so we only see the mind of the person you are not one but three what you think you are the body which with you identify yourself what others think you are not the body but the mind good bad kind harsh helpful very dangerous all these are impressions of the mind which others only see your mind and who you really are atman which is untouched by the mind untouched by the body and body grows old body becomes sick atman does not grow old and become sick when mind becomes happy or becomes sad atman does not become happy or sad atman remains pure always and that is your true nature if you establish yourself firmly in this one thought that atman is your true nature what will happen let mind come and go let body come and go it won't affect you so whether you are growing old or young or you are middle aged doesn't matter atman is same today is a happy day everybody is greeting me and saying good things about me tomorrow everybody is blaming me for something which went wrong atman is not affected so you can quickly withdraw yourself into the atma bhava and be peace that is why ashtavakra says yadi deham pratakritva if you can distance yourself from from the body that is what i think i am but i am not that and chiti vishramya tishtati and mind is put to rest why others think i am mind i am not mind so body has been distance what i think i am mind has been distance what others think i am and what happens adunaiva sukhi shanto what is left of you the true yourself immediately you will gain peace adunaiva immediate peace sukhi shanto immediately you will experience peace and that comfort which is comes from the atman and what happens next bandh mukto bhavishyasi and this bondage of this mind and body which you are always getting stuck see in meditation we are able to do that shift the mind shift the body little far and think i am the atman but the moment we open the eyes and interact with the world the body mind everything comes and settles back on you and then again you interact to the mind and the body and get confused so it says whenever this is a situation distance your body distance your mind for a while then what happens immediate peace will come and keep practicing that every day eventually this is how you will live you will see everything with a distance from yourself your emotions at a distance your body at a distance from your own self then what will happen band mukto bhavishyasi you will become free from this bondage forever but right now it is not happening it's happening when when we are in meditation when we are practicing some mind control at that point of time for a few moments here and there we are able to experience the peace but that is our true nature if we keep on practicing this a day will come a day has to come in everybody's life if they keep practicing where you will be easily be able to distinguish these are the things to do with the body these are the things to do with the mind i am not affected 
by either. Otherwise, how these great souls, you look at them? Nikhasarga Datta Maharaj, I am the cancer. Look at that statement. Look at the power of that statement. Forget, he is not even saying cancer is to my body. I am different from that. He is saying, I am there in the cancer also. Because Ekatma Sarva Bhutantara Atma. He has gone one level above. We are only discussing, let us distance ourselves and be safe. He is saying, what is there to distance? Everything is Atman, I will accept as it comes. Look at the level at which is. Somebody, how are you? I am fine. But we heard you are sick last night. Oh, you are talking about the body. Body is not fine. I am fine. That is one level. And he said, the Maharaj, what cancer? I am the cancer. What are you talking? Another level this is. This kind of yogis have lived on this earth. They walked this earth. And therefore it's possible for everybody to be like that. Why? Because they have set an example. The way great people conduct themselves, the other people also get an example and follow. Sayat pramanam kurute, the kind of ideals they set. Lokas tadanu vartate, everybody else in the society also follows them. So they are the heroes. Unfortunately, the whole generation has been given a new definition of heroes. Who are those heroes? All those who can throw their hands and legs at the beat of the song, come up with new, new hairstyles, new, new way, makeup and get up and act like a hero. Now these biopics are becoming a big hit. No? Earlier people were having imaginary stories. Now biopics are a big hit. So, he is not a hero actually. The hero in real life is somebody else. This fellow acts like him and people become this fellow's fan and then forget that fellow. <laughs> Look at that. Look at our hero worship and heroine worship business. So, we all need examples in life to follow. That's how mind is. It always needs some example, some reference, something to look up to. That's when mind rises. If otherwise, mind will go down. So, give good examples or bad examples. That depends on our education, our systems, our societies. We are putting wrong examples in front of children. What do children know? Whatever we show, they believe in that. But if we set right examples of people who are jnanis, who have lived their life with courage, conviction, fearlessness, awareness, if at all I have to pray, look at Shankaracharya, look at Vivekananda, look at these great gurus and masters. Let us set examples of people who are truly hero in their real life, daring, courageous, to take on the world as it comes and not get affected. So let us think of those examples and teach those examples to our children. By meditating on these higher truths and higher heroes, it's possible for you to break free. But always remember, the mind's only tendency is always to go down, like gravity. The moment you let loose of the mind, it will immediately flow down. I compare it with rolling a stone up the hill. When you're rolling up the hill, so tough. Leave it for a second. Stop putting the effort for a second. See what happens? The whole stone will go down in no time. Mind's nature is like that. You have to keep the mind against gravity, you have to keep pushing it up. The moment you leave the mind, oh, I have understood everything, I have practiced master the mind 30 days, I have heard Kupanishad, now I am fine, I have gained it. You see how the mind will trick you? Three days it will behave very well, as if you have really conquered it. Fourth day onwards it will start. Shoelace. When you are running and running and running, what happens? Shoelace becomes loose. Then what do you do? You get down, stop running for a moment, tie the shoelace again and then run. Suppose you don't tie it. Then the shoelace will come into your step and you will wobble, fall and break your nose. Mind is like that. It has to continuously have to check if the shoelace has come off or it is still tight. Continuously you have to check. The moment you become complacent, that is the end. Mind will take over. So the, even after all these are the Vidya Shivira, all these things, you should continue the practices within your own selves. This is just to give you an idea how to do these practices. Now the two secrets are being revealed of eternal happiness in the next two shlokas. Who can be permanently happy? Who can be permanently peaceful? Everybody wants happiness and peace. Who wants to be restless and sad? So here are the two shlokas. Eko vashi sarva bhutantaratma ekam rupam bahudhaya karoti tamatmastham yen anupashyanti dhira tesham sukham shashvatam netaresham. Very, very powerful declaration. It says, 
शाश्वतम सुखम परमनेंट हैप्पीनेस इज फॉर देम एंड नेतर एशाम एंड नॉट फॉर एनी वन एल्स अदर्स मे गेट टेम्पररी स्मॉल स्मॉल प्लेजर्स परमनेंट कंटिन्यूस इटर्नल इनफाइनेट हैप्पीनेस इज ओनली फॉर दीज पीपल एंड नॉट फॉर एनी बडी एल्स हु आर दीज पीपल हु रियलाइज एको वशी सर्वभूतात्मा आत्मा देर इज ओनली वन लॉर्ड वशी मीन्स अंडर हूज कंट्रोल एवरीथिंग इज देर इज ओनली वन दैट आत्मन अंडर हूज कंट्रोल ऑल द बींग्स आर एंड दैट इज ओनली सर्वभूतांतर आत्मा इट इज देर इन ऑल द बींग्स द सेम आत्मन एंड कंट्रोल्स एवरीथिंग बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स ओन नेचर इन एकम रूपम बहुधायत करोती एंड वन रूप इज देर इट हैज ओनली वन नेम और वन फॉर्म बट बहुधा इट लुक्स लाइक मेनी so if you see the many and get fooled no no all these are different boy is different from girl is different from old man young man rich poor unholy holy you get confused but if you see the truth deep down electricity alone is flowing through all the bulbs eko vashi all the bulbs are by controlled by whom the electricity the light is electricity so like that electricity alone is there in everything like that there is only one atman in all the beings but different different forms it appears in like we have example of fire and the air we just now saw the example or even the sun's example so tam atmastham yen anupashyanti dhira the one who sees dhira dhira is a, we have heard that definition the discriminating fellow the sukshma buddhi fellow agraya buddhi fellow what he does he sees it within himself atmastham where is it is it within within me the same thing which is in all it's actually within me only tam atmastham yen anupashyanti anupashyanti means experiences visualizes not physically sees with the eyes but the eye of the gyana chakshu that chakshu here experiences the presence of the atman within as it is in all to him alone tesham to those people alone sukham shashvatam ne taresham permanent happiness is possible all others will be running behind happiness they will never get happiness they will be chasing mirages in the world the only person who gets that happiness is who realizes that is within me that is within all the beings it is one which is the isha which is the vashi controls everything it decides who is born at what time it decides how long who will live and when to leave the body and go away and when should one die everything it controls that is the power of that thing which is my true self which is what my atman is it's in all and if i visualize it means if i realize it within myself this theory knowledge is of no use reading the menu card is no use eating the food is of use even if little likewise the one who realizes it within himself theirs is the permanent happiness it's not given to anybody else so all this nahi dhruvam adruvaihi from these temporary things permanent cannot be obtained our yamaraj said so everybody else is thought i'll become happier if i get a bigger car or i'll become happier if i buy a bigger house in the most poshest location or i'll become happier if i can go on a foreign trip if i'll become happier if i marry and have two, two boy children i'll be if i start my own business i'll be happier they can go on chasing these shadows and mirages what they call as happiness is pleasure that's why somebody says the end of all joy is sorrow and i call it a pleasure is an interval between two pains that is the nature of the world so whose is the permanent happiness tesham sukham shashvatim permanent happiness is only for those who have realized that atman within is the atman without everything is but the atman the one who has realized they alone can be permanently happy all the others will be unhappy only the next one is there nityo anityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yo vidadhati kaman tamatmastham yen anupashyanti dhira tesham shanti shashvati netaresham the same thought is being expressed in this shloka where it says whose is the permanent peace i want peace i want peace whose is the permanent peace they say there is nothing greater than peace nasti shanti samam sukham there is no sukha equivalent to shanti somebody may have lot of money lot of wealth may have cozy comfy beds and palatial house but don't sleep at all they're suffering why because mind is not at peace 
Somebody who has everything in life, what we think will give us peace and happiness. After having all these things, they are neither peaceful nor happy, all the time struggling. That's why God has said, I have two things that are my property. Only I can give it to others, others cannot buy it on their own. It's not available in the market. One is peace, another is happiness, which is what these two are saying. Anybody cannot buy it, they have to take it from God only. It means when they become God only, realize God only, these two are possible, happiness and peace in life. Happiness from the world is not possible. Peace in the world is not possible. Both are God's property. So if you want to buy something, suppose you want to buy a packet of sugar, where should you go? Not to the medicine shop, not to the shoe store, not to the textile shop. You will go to the Kirana shop and ask him, I want to buy a kg of sugar. Likewise, when you want happiness and peace, don't go to the world. In world it is not there. That is why he says, Anityam asukham lokam imam prapya bhajaswamam Ime prapya means having got this, remember me now that you have already entered this world. That's why ko, ko, koham koham he starts. Oh my God, I landed up again in the same place. This is Anitya Masukam Lokam. I have had many experiences. They say up to 40 days the child remembers the past. So, I have got it now. I have got into this. Now what should I do? Bajaswamam. Remember me. That is the only way to be happy in this world. Otherwise, me means remember that you are Atman. That is your true self. Remember that and deal with the world like a drama, like a play, like a game and don't get too involved and stuck in this. Then you will be happy. So that is what he is saying. Shanti is for them who nityo anityanam, who see the permanent in the impermanent. Body is impermanent, mind is impermanent. All that we see here, taste, smell, touch are impermanent. I am permanent in them like the Atman. Screen is permanent. Pictures are impermanent. The one who realizes that. Then chetanas chetananam. In all that are aware. What is the awareness? Everybody is aware, an ant is aware, it is moving. A bird is aware, an animal is aware, humans are aware. A sinner is also aware, saint is also aware. What is this awareness in all those which are aware? That awareness is you. That permanence is you. The awareness, the consciousness is you. So all that, then what it does? Eko bahunam. In one only it is, but appears in different, different ways. Why? Yo vidadhati kaman. It achieves various desires. Through various ways. That unless that permanent Atman is there, you will die. Can you be a teacher after that? Can you be a student after that? Can you be rich or poor after that? No. So Nitya is to be there in the Anitya to help the Anitya do all the things in the world. Chetana has to be there in the Chetana Naam. Awareness, consciousness has to be there in the conscious. Then only that person can read, write, do anything. If the consciousness called Paramatman, the awareness, Chitta, Satyam, Jnanam is not there, who can become a jnani? How can you deal with the world? It's not possible. So that subtle point it is. That which is permanent in the impermanent, that which is the consciousness of the conscience, that which is one of the many and does what? Vidadhati Kaman. Helps us experience the results of all that we desire for. Suppose you want to become a teacher, I want to study. Atman has to be there to help you remain alive and study. Then once you study, you receive knowledge with Adhati Kaman who distributes the desires as if it's distributing it's the idea. It means if I want to do anything in my life, I cannot do it because I have a body. I can't do it because I have a mind. I can only do it because I have consciousness, awareness. See the one concept is there. To know anything in the world, what are the three factors? Knowledge, known and nova. Jnanam, Gyayam, Jnata. All the three. So, an object depends on what? On the knowledge of it. I don't know what is this thing called. How do I know what it is? So, knowledge of this is important. But knowledge is to, for whom? For the knower. A knower should know that knowledge of this piece of cloth is kerchief. It is not a shawl. It is not a blanket. It is not a bread sheet. This piece of cloth is called as kerchief. So, kerchief is the piece of cloth. The knowledge that it's a piece of cloth and call kerchief is the knowledge and I am the nova. But all three of them depend on what is the question. All three of them depend on awareness. Suppose this kerchief was lying here. I am not aware, I am not seen it. Will I get curious about what it is? Will I get curious to know what it is? Object is there, 
knowledge of the object exists knower also exists but why am i not bothered about it because it is not been brought in my awareness circle there may be 15 cellos in the class one fellow will be doing something in some corner if the teacher's awareness is not on that child attention is not there will the teacher know or worry about what that child is up to the teacher is busy with something else so unless i am aware it is in my awareness knower knowing and the knowledge does not happen it has to be in my awareness likewise awareness that chaitanyam in which everything exists that's how we get to know about everything so gyanam gyayam gyata they all depend on the one faculty called awareness it should be in my awareness then only i know about things if it is not in my awareness like till now upanishads were not in your awareness was upanishad not there they are there from thousands of years if this knowledge is not new you got to know of it today it came into your awareness plus you are the knower upanishad is the object of knowledge and the knowledge of upanishad is that you are brahman or whatever whatever but all these things came into light only when you became aware so that is the idea that awareness is the reason why we get to know of anything in the world the knower known and knowledge depend on a greater idea of awareness jagrata sushupta swapna depend on the greater idea of consciousness turiya without that all these three we cannot experience so that is this this one helps us to do things in the world and achieve the results of our action vidhati kaman again tamatmastam and the one who sees it where not in kailasha vaikuntha brahmaloka not in temples mosques within oneself the one who realizes it that dhira for him is the permanent peace shanti hi shashvatim ne taresham nobody else can be happy and peaceful in life forever unless they realize this truth that the same self which is within is in all if they don't realize this nothing happens you don't realize anything in the world in fact this word here used is chetan chetana chetana naam those who are conscious like moving ants animals and other in that the consciousness is god so what about matter just now we said in everything brahman exists jada chaitana they are only telling chaitana but then also the previous word is nitya anitya naam those who are impermanent in that it is permanent everything is impermanent brahman is permanent but truth is that the chetana shakti is there in the jada also how can objects respond they cannot have ear mouth eyes ears to speak but then there is a story that how chai consciousness is in everything there was this sant gyaneshwar also called dhyaneshwar of alandi in maharashtra he lived between probably 1275 to 95 96 to 21 years old boy see all these young all these great rishis are small age and then he took samadhi on his own jeeva samadhi he there were four siblings their parents died early and four siblings were there sopan nivrutti and mukta bai mukta bai was her sister other two were his brothers and he was gyaneshwar himself and he was a great gyani by birth and it so happened that his fame spread far and wide within 16 years of age he was a gyani and everybody used to come to him and one particular person a big yogi was there his name was changdev and this fellow had done tapasya for 1400 years and defied death 42 times it seems in his life by continuously extending his lifetime imagine 1400 years somebody is living and he had lot of arrogance about himself so he heard about this young fellow who is becoming very popular and he thought he has no siddhi nothing but then is considered as a great yogi let me send out a letter to him that i am coming to meet him but he doesn't know how to address him so if i call gyani then i give him acknowledging that he is gyani if i don't write you are a gyani then maybe i am demeaning him so he doesn't know what to write he sends a blank paper to him and this gyaneshwar doesn't respond his sister mukta bai takes the paper and responds you are siddhi is as empty as your paper and <laughs> sends it back and this fellow is what is this small kids after all they're talking to me 1400 year old i am and then he says let me go and show him my power so he rides on a tiger and carries a serpent as his whip with which he'll be whipping the tiger and moving and poor serpent and tiger imagine their plight <laughs> anyway he comes on tiger the whole village everybody oh this gyani has come changdev 
and he comes and then what happens our uh, sant gyaneshwar and his three brother sisters all four of them are sitting on a wall it seems a masonry wall and chatting away like children do and then they told this person is coming so sant gyaneshwar says okay let us go but they say he is coming on a tiger then they think we don't have any vehicle so he tells the wall come on wall let's move and the wall starts moving it seems and on the wall he goes flying and meets this this fellow gets a shock controlling a tiger is some siddhi making a jada a wall made of stones to move that needs some other level of siddhi and he becomes very humble but idea is that chetana chetana naam we are saying the consciousness in the conscious but the truth is that even in the so called unconscious consciousness is there that is how will the stone obey gyaneshwar stone obeyed because there is stone can listen can hear what gyaneshwar is saying that atman is in everything in anu 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 raniyan mahato mahiyan in the tiniest to the largest that atman alone is and because of that reason everything responds when govardhan giri li- krishna lifted you think is possible for a boy to lift govardhan he became light like cotton it seems he decided oh krishna has touched me the stones floated it seems how is it possible on earth all this is possible because in everything in every one in every aspect of this universe brahman alone is how wonderful is this thought so that is the idea 14th shloka tad etad iti manyante anirdeshyam paramam sukham katham nu tad vijaniyam kimu bhati vibhati va is like a question being asked and answer being given it's a poetry so poetry is what tad etad iti that one is this like you are saying no etad vai tat so he is saying this one is that so he is saying tad etad iti this one is that you have told just now manyante and people toss think about it how it is anirdeshyam we all believe now we have heard from you and we know now that it is anirdesha means it cannot be described there are no parameters there are no qualities to describe and paramam sukham it is the highest of the bliss not ordinary happiness which comes and goes it is an impermanent happiness we also have learned katham tu tadvijaniya how do i get to know it is the question kimu bhati vibhati va how does it shine or it is illumined how does it either illumine or is illumined by what happens at that place what is its nature you say it's permanent happiness highest happiness all right we have understood and it cannot be described in words yato vacha nivartante aprapya manasasa adreshya magrahayam all these things i don't know how to do that so he is asking we are talking about such a wonderful thing how do i get to know it and what is its nature how does it shine or is it illuminated or does it illumine how does it reveal itself that is the idea bhati means shining vibhati means reflecting so shining or reflecting idea is it is a way to say how do i get to know of it because if i have to see something it should reflect the light that is falling on it or it should shine on its own without the two conditions i can't see a thing a black hole cannot be seen because it doesn't reflect anything back no vibhati or sun i can see because it is bhati it shines on its own or moon i can see because it reflects the light of sun now tell me how do i know this thing atman that you are talking about does it shine on its own or is it reflected by something else what is how is the way of its revelation and the most poetic and beautiful shloka of katobanishad comes here as an answer as the 15th answer न तत्र सूर्यो भाति न चंद्र तारकम नेमा विद्युतो भान्ति कुतोयम अग्नि हि तमेव भान्तम अनुभाति सर्वम तस्य भासा सर्वम इदम विभाति सी हाउ ब्यूटीफुल दिस श्लोक आई इट सेज सो द प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन वाज वी अंडरस्टूड ऑल दैट यू हैव टोल्ड दैट दिस वन इज दैट एंड इज परम सुखम एंड इट इज नेचर इज कैन नॉट बी डिस्क्राइब्ड सो हाउ डू आई गेट टू नो ऑफ इट डज इट शाइन ऑन इट्स ओन or it shines in somebody else's light it does it reflect anything so how does it reveal to me so the answer to that is actually in that place where it is the in your own heart hriday akash na suryo bhati no sun is there to shine and reveal it 
Na Chandra Tarakam, daylight is not there. What about night if sun is not there? Moon is also not there. And stars are also not there, to, in whose dim light at least I can get to see it. So it is not revealed by all this. Then can it be seen by Vidyuta, the lightning? Sun is not there, moon is not there, star is not there, it's a dark cloudy night. Can by his flash of lightning it be revealed? No. By fire, can I light some fire and see? No. None of these exist there. In the physical world, how do we see things? If sun is shining or in the night when moon is shining, even moon is not there, through the very dim light of stars we can see something. That is also not there. If a lightning flashes, Vidyuta, can we see that? If that is also not there, can we see by lighting a fire, by matchstick or a torch or anything? No, 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 no. Then how do we see it is the question. How does it reveal? And very beautifully they explain, Tameva bhantam anubhati sarvam. As it is shining, in its shine everything else is revealed. When it shines, in its light everything else is revealed. Tasya bhasa, the way it shines. Anubhat, sarvamidam vibhati, all this is also shining, reflecting the light of the same thing. So it's a philosophical statement. What does it mean? That one Atman, Tama, Eva, Bhantam, that alone shines on its own. One very physical example will be sun. Sun shines on its own. If I have to see sun, do I need to go with another light to see sun? Take a torch and show sun to somebody. It doesn't work. Sun shines on its own. And when sun shines only, everything else shines. It means everything else reflects and gets revealed. When sun rises only, the world gets revealed to us. On a dark night, nothing gets revealed. And as it shines, whatever the light of sun is, same is the light of our, this thing. Sometimes when, on certain evenings, when sunlight is reddish, we see everything as reddish. Means because of the, the atmosphere. Everything looks yellowish, reddish. And in the midday sun, everything looks bright white. So as it shines, everything else shines is the idea. The Atma alone shines. It is fully aware of what it is. It doesn't need anything to be aware of it. You can't make it aware by some other agent, by your mind or senses or any perception. This Atma cannot be revealed. When does it reveal? It has to reveal itself. How? By its own nature. It is Jnanam, it is consciousness. So don't think there is some bulb glowing inside now. Idea of this Jyoti is the consciousness. When he says Angushta Matra Purusha Madhya Atmani Tishtati, it is not that and Jyoti Adhumakaha, no smoke, the fire alone is. It is not that there is a real fire. Idea is that everything that we see in the world is because of light. If light falls on something we see, Likewise, Atman when shines, everything is revealed. The mind is revealed, what we are thinking, what we are experiencing. The mind is revealed because Atman shines. The body is revealed, hands, eyes, ears, nose, Indriyas are revealed. Indriya Arthas are revealed only because of Atman that is shining within. And two important points to notice, Tameva Bhantam Anubhati Sarvam. As it shines, only everything else starts shining. If Atman goes out of, or Atman stops shining in you in the sense, you are dead and then body is not reflecting that back, then nothing you experience in this world. And Tasya Bhasa, as it shines alone, everything else shines. In a yellow light, everything looks yellow. In a green light, everything looks green. In a blue light, everything looks blue. Like that, in the Atman's light, everything looks like Atman only. So the one who has experienced the light of this Atman will see everything as Atman only. On, only covers are different. But the Light is same, they understand. Like sunlight is there, when it passes through colored glass, appears to be colored. But what happens, the jnani who knows, this is sunlight passing through the colored glass, immediately knows. No, no, this is not red, green, blue light. This is sunlight only which is coming. If bulbs are of many colors, and electricity is flowing through that, people will think there is red light and blue light and green light and yellow light. But the jnani will say what? No, no, these lights are all perceptions. The electricity is colorless. Sun's light is colorless. Electricity is colorless. But when it appears in different bulbs, it looks different. And like that, when it passes through different colored glasses or a prism, sun's light splits and looks like many colors. 
But truth is what? Sun's light is colorless light. And therefore, this Atman has no attributes. It's colorless like that. But, because Anirdeshyam is said in the beginning, there is no attributes, qualities, no definitions. Yet, in its light, everything is seen. Somebody looks rich, poor, ugly, beautiful, old, young, kind, harsh, good, bad, holy, sinful. All these are reflecting because of the mind which is filtering this light of Atman. But if you remove the light, where is the mind? Mind cannot be seen. Mind itself is using the light of Atman to do its work. That's why Vidadhati Kaman, it helps you to achieve whatever you want to achieve in life. How? Because electricity is working. So electricity goes through a mixer grinder, it mixes chutney. If it goes through a cooler, it gives you cool air. If it goes through the mic, it gives you sound. In all of them, who is there? Electricity is there. But is electricity sound? No. Is electricity wind? No. Is electricity light? No. Is electricity chutney? No. But all these are reflections, effects, effects of the same electricity. In the same way that Atman which is colorless, odorless, attributeless, pure, Shuddha, Shukram, that one when it interacts with the mind, it appears different in different ways. That's all is the truth. So if you get fooled by the diversity in the world, it means you have not understood anything, you are Agnani. But if you have understood this truth behind the diversity, you have become a Jnani, you have become a Dhira and you have realized it within yourself through your own personal experience that Atman alone exists and everything else is shining in its light only. Therefore, Atman is the truth, Satyam, Jagan, Mithya. All the other Ill things are illusions including the body and the mind. The one who realizes this, Tesham Sukham Shashvatim, Tesham Shantihi Shashwati Netaresham. For all others, this permanent peace and happiness is not possible because you have realized it, you will be always happy and peaceful. Whatever situation comes in life, whatever happens, world may call it good, bad, ugly, world may call it happy or sad things, world may call it fortune or misfortune. For you, who is dependent on the self and not on this tricky mind, will see everything as one. And that is how you can always be peaceful and happy. Iti Katakopanishadi Dvitiya Dhyaye Dvitiya Valli. This is the Katopanishad second chapters, second valli. <laughs>